Thank you very much for the introduction. So, hello, welcome you to my, I welcome you to my talk. My name is Svenja Schröder. Um, currently, I'm working at the University of Vienna at, in the research group Cooperative Systems, or COSI. My uh, um, supervisor, Professor Peter Reichel, has a knack for acronyms, so yeah, that's why we call it COSI. And um, I, have to say, I have to tell you, I'm doing conference hopping these days. In the past days, I was at, in Stuttgart at the Menschen Computer, which is an H, the German HCI conference, and there we had a PhD school as well, where we had like a little group with 10 people where we had a very private discussion. And now I'm here with all of you, a very technical um, audience, and um, which is of course a bit intimidating, but also like very great, um, um, it's, it's also very great. Um, I have to say, regarding my thesis, I'm very at the beginning, so I'm only done having my topic and having my first research plan, but I hope to bring a new facet into this symposium with my main topic, usable security, which I will also introduce a bit. So, okay, this is not working. I Ah, okay, that explains everything, thanks. Um, my motivation is that, like all of you know, um, the uncovering, for example, of the global survey, the extent of the global surveillance by the NSA has um, led to a strong increase in popularity of the Tor network, which um, is like the onion routing privacy network. There are, but there are some problems, like the, um, the usability problems of the apps hinder users in participating in the network, which decreases the anonymity for all users. And there's a significant body of related research about usability uh, in Tor programs for desktop computers, but not for mobile apps. And in my PhD project, I want to make the contribution of increasing the usability of Tor apps on mobile devices in order to increase the overall anonymity for all users. Um, also recent events like the, the crisis with the refugees, I, for, I, don't, I haven't talked to any refugees yet, but I could, for example, think of that that's also something important for the refugees if they want to communicate during their, their journey, I think that um, the usage of mobile apps for privacy will increase um, in importance the next years. So my research field is on the top. I call it mobile usable privacy. That's drawing from several um, yeah, fields. Um, I myself, I'm more coming from the human computer interaction side probably most of you will come more from the security and privacy side. And the main underlying topic of my thesis, like the big circle, is usable, usable security and privacy. And I picked certain toolboxes out of this big set, which is mobile HCI, that's human computer interaction with mobile devices, and privacy enhancing technologies, the Tor network in my case. Usable security, how many of you have heard of usable security so far? Okay, that's a chance for me to tell you something about it. <laughs> um, when you're designing secure systems, of course you can build in the best algorithms and like this most secure connection way, but what is it worth if, if nobody can use it? So if you, if you don't bring the human into the loop during the whole development cycle, it's um, very hard to have the most security you can have in your systems. Like most companies do something like, okay, we built this secure product, let's ask users how, how we can make it more secure, like an usability evaluation of the, of the existing app but most, in most cases, that's not enough. You have to bring the human in, into the loop from the beginning of the whole development cycle because, um, yeah, you can build more secure systems by starting with the right requirements and not making some mistakes. And even if you have, like, experts 
uh, like all of you have stumbled upon security uh, usability flaws in like the most popular um, applications because sometimes it's just that you make unintentional un mis mistakes. It's not that you don't know about your to about the field or that you are stupid or something like that. It's just the system could be more usable. So it's not. I most of the times I tell users it's not your fault. It's just the system could be designed better. Of course, another um, central field of my thesis is privacy enhancing technologies, in particular the Tor onion routing network, um, which is like uh, centered around technology and apps for accessing the Tor network to ensure the user's anonymity. anonymity. And Dingledine and Matthewson said that increasing the user base at the same time leads to an enhanced anonymity, as I said before, for all users due to network effects. It's like, for me, it would be easier to hide in the crowd uh, present, present in this room at the PhD school at the Mention Computer last week. It would have been um, harder because there were only 10 people. And of course, mobile HCI, like um, mobile interaction, ways of mobile interaction sensors, device specifications, mobile phones or tablets have totally some totally different um, interaction ways or specifications like a desktop computer, for example, you have smaller screens, you have a battery which you have to draw upon, you have sensors and so on. When having a look at usability of Tor applications, uh, of course, every good thesis should have some research questions. Here are my preliminary research questions. Um, first of all, I of course want to see which usability problems hinder users to per participate in the Tor network or mobile devices and how can they be overcome. Um, a special focus should be put upon um, special usability problems during installation and setup because of course you can't use the app if you can't install it. Um, then how does the mobile context influence the usage of the Tor network on mobile devices? Um, are there special characteristics of the mobile context in which the Tor network is used? Um, there I have to say context is a wide field. If you have a look at mobile HCI research, um, context, like there are people who have done like ex extensive literature review and uh, put up whole frames, frameworks, what is context, so probably I should be, like I should specify that in the, in the work, in my work. And in which ways uh, does this context influence the Tor app usage and reflect on the user's behavior? Then I want to have a look at which special mobile characteristics can help to enhan enhance the functionality and usability of Tor, uh, mobile Tor apps in a reasonable way with an emphasis on reasonable way because of course I could track how fast is, is the user walking and maybe it's a risky situation but you don't want your anonymity app to know a lot about you so hmm, okay. So this should of course be done without compromising the user's anonymity and security. My research approach so far is that I want to do a user analysis. I want to um, make some requirements. I want to know what does the user need and what should I maybe have a special look at. Then I want to do formative user studies in the lab and in the field because I thought, of course, I can put an Android device in my lab, which, will be, um, which we will have later this year. But um, if I have a mobile device, why shouldn't I go out in the field and have a look at how, this, how the apps behave in the field? This should be under special consideration of mobile context and those characteristics. Then, in, I, ideally, I want to um, like derive some um, design principles for mobile usable privacy. I could give to developers of um, privacy app, apps for uh, mobile devices. And of course, I'm going to implement improvements. And in the end, I want to do a summative evaluation, which in the HCI world means like, okay, now we've done all this work. In the end, I want to check, was this worth all the hassle? Um, in total, so far I have three studies planned, but of course maybe if I find something else to research or something goes wrong, maybe I, wanna, I will have to do more. 
And as I already mentioned, we're gonna have a cozy user trial lab later this um, year. Um, it's probably in, uh, momentarily in the building phase, so um, ideally I wanna build some way to research usable um, security, the usable security of apps in the, in the lab. So if somebody in Vienna is interested in testing usability of secure, secure anonymous apps or um, also applications, you can write me an email. Some, some notes about related work. Of course, I'm not the first one to evaluate the usability of Tor applications. Um, so far, there's a lot about um, usability on uh, desktop PCs. In 2007, Clark and Ali um, examined different Tor application setups for traditional PCs. Probably most of you know the Tor network and how to access it. Back these times, there was only like a very modular way. You have to install the button and the proxy and you have to configure your Firefox. It was all very like, even expert made, experts made a lot of mistakes. And of course, um, um, they found out that the most usable um, version is the all-in-one browser, which led to the development in the Tor browser bundle as we know it today. Um, what I really liked about this one is that it was not research as, um, yeah, for the bin, as we say in Germany, like you research something and then it ends up in, as some paper in some um, like drawer, but no, the development team said, hey, cool, you did some e usability evaluation, let tell us how we could make it better and then we're gonna do it. So I, I really like that. Of course, there were also some flaws found in the Tor browser bundle this time. For example, that there was a very long launch time and so on. And um, you couldn't like distinguish was it the Firefox browser opened or the Tor browser bundle. And this led to some improvements. And um, I guess those, how many three studies um, are the reason the Tor browser bundle is as usable as it is today. Of course, coming from the network side, um, you, you can also do like some usability evaluation about the network metrics. Müller et Ali from Berlin did this in 2012 and found out, okay, it's no surprise that, the high, uh, that there's a high user frustration potential due to delay, okay. Um, and the study I found most interesting, but unfortunately it's also the shortest one, was a study by Asal and Chiasen who, um, yeah, um, researched the usability of Tor and Android devices, and they found several usability flaws, for example, the unintuitive feel of the apps, technical language, and insecure options that risks, risk the user's security and privacy. What I also found um, interesting, which I wanna mention on a separate slide, are generalized heuristics for an anonymity systems. That's the outcome usable, usable security research can give. For example, it can result in um, heuristics or guidelines which are um, generalizable for all security systems. So installation precedes operation. Like I said before, if you can't install it, uh, you're not, you can't use it. Users should be aware of the trade-offs. Um, for example, if you increase network latency, it could be, you could pay the price of um, decreased anonymity, and you have to say why, not how, so security measures should be explained in an understandable language. So, so much about related work. My starting point, of course, I could have a lot of starting points. There are a lot of anonymity apps for mobile devices. I want to start with Orbot on Android, the Tor proxy app. I want to have a look at that and probably Orweb, the browser which works over Orbot. But I, there's currently in development is Orfox, which is um, yeah, a Tor-enabled Firefox, this long-term substitute for Orweb that's in development right now. Um, I put. I put the links in the slides, sorry. Um, if you're interested in that, you can, you can research that. Uh, you can have a look at the link. There's also the Onion browser for iOS, but hmm, I think it's also open source, but you have to pay, I think, one euro for it. I'm more interested in the apps for Android. Okay. 
here's the outline of the planned studies. Um, I'm just going to be really quick about that. I want to do an online questionnaire to identify requirements of the user base. Then I want to do the lab study and the field study and also a summative study. What's also maybe interesting for you if you're doing user studies with mobile devices, you can always ask yourself, do I want to do it in the laboratory or in the office? I mean, a laboratory can also be your office if you close the door, or do you want to bring it into the field? The question, lab or field, always depends. What's more uh, important, that it's like most as realistic as it can be, or do you want to control all the factors that can happen? I mean, if the, the user gets hit by a car while walking over the street and having a look at your app, I, I guess that's not, a, that, that's, not under the, that's not the perfect control you can have in the laboratory. So you have different advantages and disadvantages. And the if and why is not as important as the when and how. Um, coming to the expected outcome, that was a question I was asked last week, but what's going to come out of your thesis? Um, unfortunately, I don't have, I don't have any um, findings yet since I'm still at the very begin beginning of my thesis. Of course, I want to um, provide a list of requirements for mobile Tor usage that's in the, in the HCI usability engineering cycle in the first place. I want how do users use Tor, mobile Tor apps, and what do they want? Of course, I want to provide an increased usability of, of the apps. So in the real world, I'm going to be able, in the, in the um, perfect, I'm going to be able to um, in program, reprogram the interface. I don't know how I'm going to do, what exactly I'm going to do there yet. Then I want to, um, have some, get some insights about the role of context in mobile usable privacy. And of course, I want to provide some guidelines or heuristics for developers of those apps. Here's a short slide about my status. So I started last year, end of 2014. I'm done with choosing my topic so far. Um, I already did an extensive literature review, but of course, there's, there's always more. Uh, currently, I'm reading about context in mobile HCI. How does context influence uh, the usage? But um, I want to start with the first study soon, requirement analysis, and then go on from there. Some issues I'm uh, having right now with all this um, planning, thesis planning, who's my target group? In the beginning, I said my motivation is that um, mobile Tor apps are gaining a wider audience right now. That would mean that I'm not only ex um, ex yeah, asking experts, or not only experts are my target group, but um, also it's always interesting to ask experts about their opinion. Maybe I want to research both. I guess that uh, depends on my, my um, study setup. And of course, that also depends uh, influences motivations and goals and usage scenarios I'm dealing with, which is the base for a good HCI research. And as I already mentioned several times, context, what's context in my case? Is it only the surroundings like noise or movement or other distractions or also specific situations with a high risk, for example, um, fleeing over the border and ending up in some camp? I don't know. Okay. So, thank you for your uh, ears. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. And um, if you want to ask some questions, you can ask me questions. I failed to put my email address on this uh, slide, but I have some um, um, cards here. And if you're interested in my email address, come and say hi and get one of my, my cards. Thank you. Any questions at the moment? I want to make a suggestion. Since I know you uh, hear a lot of um, guests from companies, and, if you, and of course that's a very science-based talk, I would be interested if usable security is an issue in your company or wherever you're working, and if you've heard of that or if that would be interesting for you.
it would, it would be something which would interest me if you don't have questions for me, but of course you can ask me anything. Thank you. I have a question. Um, stability and security are very uh, contrary topics. Um, and uh, most users, they just click anything on their app and say yes, oh, yes, 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 okay. And do you have any ideas for improving security usability that the user is aware of the security problems in your, uh, in your topic? Mm, about the contrast between security and usability, I would make the counter I would say, in contrary, it's very important that secure apps are also usable because otherwise users make unintentional mistakes, which leads to security breaches. So I think that's very important to bring usability into it. And of course, my thesis topic wants to make a contribution, but there are also like, there's a lot of research also about how do we communicate knowledge about security to the users, also in terms of pop-up messages, or there's also research about, okay, we can show everything in pop-up messages, but at some point the user will just click the X on the right side. It's just, that's a very interesting topic and it draws a lot from psychology, like where, where does the annoyance get, get as uh, high that the user just closes the program and buys from, from another company? I don't know, I hope I can make a, make a contribution to, of course, I wanna increase usability and security. Other questions? Then, thanks again. Thank you.